Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the Gaylord National Harbor Convention Center, where we're covering the Air Force Association's annual Air, Space, and Cyber Conference and Trade Show. Our coverage here is sponsored by L3 Technologies and Leonardo DRS. Uh, and at this, at air shows most of the time, we're seeing finished products and not Really cool things like Radome, without which the finished products uh, don't work. Uh, Bruce Rush is a uh, um, uh, program manager uh, at uh, the composite uh, part of the business of General Dynamics Mission Systems. Bruce, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank uh, you very much. Uh, it's it's a pleasure, and uh, you've worked in the Radome side of the universe for more than 35 years. Uh, it looks just like an F-16 Radome, uh, and and for folks who, who don't know, you know, everybody talks about Lockheed Martin's F-16. It was originally General Dynamics. F-16 before General Dynamics sold that line off uh, to uh, uh, Lockheed. Talk to us a little bit about you know, how this radome is different and why it's uh, so important for the F-16 program going forward. First of all, let me tell you what a radome is. It's an acronym for a radar dome. The word was invented in the 1940s when radar first made its emergence onto the marketplace. The radome has to perform various functions. It has to serve as the aerodynamic shape of the aircraft so it can fly at Mach whatever through the air, but at the same time it serves as a radar window. A radome is much like a window is to optical light. It allows radar waves to pass through it just like a window allows light rays to pass through the visible eye can see. The radome, as it functions in the world of technology, either distorts or reflects the energy, much like a window distorts or reflects visible light. So we have certain parameters that we have to meet when we make the radomes, so they perform within very tight parameters to pass that radar energy through it, so the pilot in the cockpit is, is able to see without visual, right. okay? He can see targets at night or in rain, in clouds, and the radome helps guide missiles that are fired to the target. This particular radome has now been modified from the original design to work in the broadband or the wideband spectrum that the new radars are now operating in. So unlike the old radomes that were made of fiberglass, this one is actually made of quartz and a, uh, a very specialized resin system that is very, very transparent to radar and allows much less reflection, much less distortion, and allows the new radars to operate over their broadband. I would equate it much to like the old timey telephones of yesteryear to the new smartphones of today. That's the difference in what this radome will do versus what the older ones did. And, and what is um, what are some of the challenges of making something that has to be very, very sophisticated, but at the same time extremely durable because you were talking about the stress loads on the airplane. Um, there are folks who are working on this airplane, uh, you know, it's going to get dinged and everything else. What are some of the investment, especially as you transition to a completely different way of producing, right? Talk to us a little bit about how you're working on the durability side of the equation as the well. The durability side is, is very, very important to the Air Force because uh, the maintenance of the aircraft is, is critically important. Not just to purchase the aircraft, but how it has to be maintained over oh, 25 years of flight service, maybe 30 years of flight service. Or in the case of the F-16 now, it's been flying since 1977. So what we try to do with these radomes are to make them to the very tight tolerances for radar performance, but also make them so that they are easily uh, maintained in the fleet. If they do get dinged, they can be very easily fixed, repaired, brought back to specification performance with uh, very little cost. And it is a trick to, to pull all that off in one composite structure. Um, how much, now, I, I, and this just will may show my ignorance, but you know more about this than, than, than I do. How much of this is also, you know, for example, from a stealth sensor standpoint, you want to try to make it where the aperture can project out, but then it also has some degree of protection from ray, rays coming in in order to be detected there, and counter-detected. There features of it that are included that I really can't talk about in detail that do make it uh, somewhat stealthy. And uh, I can't go into any more detail than that because uh, 
Well, the government doesn't like that technology talked about. <laughs> um, well, but that was an important question that I was asking yes, you, was that that is increasingly reducing your signature, whether you're a fourth generation airplane or a fifth generation airplane is important. Bruce, thanks so very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, it. sir, for having us. We appreciate it. It's a real pleasure because, like I said, I mean, most of the time we're looking at big finished systems and unmanned systems or aircraft and stuff like that, and you don't see a radome, and without the radome, you don't have an Air Force. So, ultimately, thanks very much. Thank you, sir.